Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you just tuned into my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, basically I'm addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So this week is going to be a long review. It's going to be three different cities, a new Rolex stainless steel watch and a couple of luxury destinations. To start it off, we're going to book a resort in Maldives. And this time we'll be trying a new resort. It's called the Angzana. And the plan is I'm going to stay one week in an in ocean villa, which is the sanctuary, followed by the second week, which is going to be a beachfront villa. A sneak peek of the in ocean sanctuary villa. And that's Mali, which is the city of Maldives. And I find it fascinating, just a spot of land with buildings in it and then sea all around. To make it to the resort, we need a seaplane. And those are the pilots in action. A couple of resorts from top. Finally got to our resort. This boat will be taking us to the in-ocean reception because there's two receptions. One is for the in-ocean villas and the other is for the beachfront. And just look at that smile. The hospitality you get in Maldives is like no other. Just look at that view. So we're making our way to reception and then to our villa. There's actually three sanctuary villas, as you can see there, but one of them is a spa. So realistically, there are two villas that can be rented and we're renting one. And the one you see at the opposite, not in the middle, is the second one. So one is for your sunset, one is for your sunrise. So the one we booked is for the sunset. I'll make sure to include a photo for sure. Just got to the villa guys, a small tour. So that's the main entrance once you come in. That's like a relaxing section of the villa. With the sliding doors with the beautiful view. Moving to the outside, which we'll be spending most of the time, you have a couple of seating areas as well as a lounger where you can just relax under the sun. Some tables and chairs, a sofa, a lounger and the sunbathing next to the pool. And that's the infinity pool. I'll show it to you in a second. And the infinity pool, which is my favorite part of the villa. So what do they mean by infinity is that once you're in the water, you feel like you're in the ocean. The horizon actually matches with the water level and you feel like you're in a pool that is perpetual or infinity. And for you who wondered how I look like, that's me. Moving on to show you the second floor, AKA the balcony. Or relaxing lounger sofa so the second bed which we thought our son will be staying in, but he's too young to be staying alone. Main entrance. Moving on to the balcony or the second floor. Mm -hmm. 
once again a view of the other villas from the top and that's the main island which we'll be going to in a week's time The water depth here is around half a meter, a couple of loungers at the top with some table and chairs and a couple of sunbeds. As promised guys, the sunset view, that is just spectacular. Grabbing some dinner. And I thought I'll show you the villa at night as well. The thing is that there's no camera that can actually capture what an eye can see. And it's unfortunate that I don't have my 4K camera. And not only that, my phone is already full. I forgot to back it up before I left. So I'm using the lowest setting, which is 720 pixels. Another morning some breakfast, more swimming and snorkeling, and some diving later. And a week later, guys, this boat will be taking us to the beachfront section, so it has a reception again by itself. We're going to check in into our beachfront villa, and I'll show you around. Just waiting for our transport. You can see the beautiful white sand and the palm trees is just spectacular. That's our villa. It's a pool villa. And of course, guys, a wrist shot. So on this trip, I'm wearing the GMT Master 2, AKA Coke. We're gonna take it for a swim as well. Camera doesn't do it justice. The photos are actually better than the camera. I'm gonna enjoy the remaining week I'll catch you on the next clip, which will be us leaving Maldives and heading to a new destination. It's checkout day today and we're just waiting for our transport to take us to the seaplane and then from the seaplane to Mali airport and on to our next destination. So guys, just landed in Muscat in Oman, just picked up the car from the airport. In this city, I'm wearing the Petek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time Reference 5164A. Driving to, I would say, definitely one of the most luxurious hotels in Oman, which is called Al Bustan Palace. It's part of the Ritz Carlton group or chain. And Oman is another amazing, beautiful country with amazing hospitality, landscape, and cleanliness. Another shot guys and you can tell the difference in timing. So the skeletonized hand pointing to the home time which is back in London being at 7.36 and the local time in Oman at 10.36. So making it three hours difference 
Oman being ahead of London. I have to just show you the architecture of this building. It actually is a palace. It looks like a palace. The high ceilings, the amazing chandeliers, the beautiful finish on the walls is just extraordinary. So guys, just checked in and as you can see, swimming with my Aquanaut. And testing the Aquanaut for waterproof. So the beach here is not like Maldives, of course, but the landscape I like about Tuman is the volcanic mountains that they have. As you can see there, the mountains to either side of the hotel. A couple of hours later, a nice swim in the ocean. We're staying here for nearly a week. After that, we're heading to New York City where I'm picking up my new Rolex watch and giving you the best Rolex buying tips. And finally arrived in New York City, staying at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. I'm obviously jet lag, gonna take us a couple of days to relax. We're staying here for seven nights and I'm gonna make this all about the watch content. As you can see, the watch featured in New York City is the BLNR, and I think a full rounder. So the Patek Philippe Travel Time, the Batman or BLNR, and the Coke or GMT Master 2 16710 are honestly the best travel watches money can buy. I would add to it the Jubilee Pepsi, but it's too dressy, too flashy. It's not really a tool watch, something that you can actually swim enjoy and have fun with. So guys, my plan is I'm going to show you around New York City and talk you through the best buying tips when buying from a private seller. So you can always go the easy way, which is buying from an authorized dealer or a verified seller, good references or someone you've dealt with, etc. This is the second time I buy from a private seller. You need to do your homework. You need to be safe. Lots of fraud, lots of scammers have been going on, especially during the last couple of years. Why did I buy this watch from a private seller? To be honest, because I'm buying it as a first hand. What I'm planning on doing here is take you through the best tips to make sure you don't get scammed, keep safe and save your money or your watch. New York being the city it is, it can never be safe enough. So what I suggest you do, if possible, whenever you're meeting with the seller, always be with another person. For example, I won't be going alone, I'm gonna have my wife with me and the seller is not gonna know that my wife is with me. For example, if you're supposed to meet the guy, let's say at four, 
get there at least half an hour before check out the area make sure that you choose the spot never accept that the guy tells you the spot why do i say that is because he could be planning some kind of a scam some kind of a robbery he can have some people with him some kind of an ambush so you always choose the place so the place that you choose having all these buildings in new york i would say choose a high building choose somewhere that has one entry one exit the other day i was in apple store picking up the new iphone 11 pro and in front of my eyes i see a guy coming in pulling an iphone with the security cables it's attached to and just running out of the doors there were like seven exits that the guy could have escaped from what did the security guy do all he did is yelled at him and the guy just took off with a couple of brand new iphones in his pocket what i'm trying to say here is one exit would make it more difficult the guy would think twice before planning any escape in this case, I'm going to be choosing a high building on the 65th floor at the Rainbow Room at the Rockefeller Center. So the exits you see is elevators. I've actually told the security that I am buying a watch from a guy. Make sure you ask the seller or the buyer to wear distinctive clothing. For example, a red hat, a flashy blazer, or let them tell you the color of his shoes. Obviously, you're not gonna be asking him to dress up for you, but ask him, what are you wearing? Why do I say that again? So that when he arrives, he doesn't know how you look like. You can actually hover around him without him realizing who you are. Something might be off, something that you don't feel comfortable with. So that would be your exit game. And make your second person, basically in my case, my wife, have the cash. So never have the cash on you, just in case they decide to jump you, you won't have any cash on you. Once you inspect the watch, you're happy with it, you thoroughly inspect it. Another thing you can do is authenticate it. In my scenario, it was a first hand, the guy with his ID matching the name on the warranty card. I was happy with it, but you can always check on the websites whether it's been stolen. You can always give Rolex a ring and you can run through the serial number, etc. But as I said, because it's a first hand owner, I was happy with it. The transaction complete, getting some drinks, a celebration, a nice wrist shot with the Batman and back in the hotel, giving you a sneak peek of the watch that I picked up. As you can see guys, it's a Neo Vintage, a 2004 model to be exact. The anchor might have given it away in case you haven't guessed it. A small little tease. And finally, guys, the watch. And there you go, guys. That's the Rolex Submariner. 16610 LV aka Kermit. It's a very special one. I'm going to tell you why when I do the full unboxing next week, but it's never been polished. It actually has the early dials. I believe it's a Mark III with the oval O and the Swiss made stretched between 28 and 32 markers. And the best part is it has all the receipts, all the paperwork, and I can't wait to show you that on the next review. So guys, gotta grab some dinner. I'll see you next week once I'm back in London. I hope you enjoyed this review. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.